Yep. Perfect. All right, sweet. So, cool. Hopefully you can hear me. Everything's going. You should be able to see the screen nicely. Um, and let's get on with it. So in terms of the topic today, we're going to be talking about retargeting audiences or like five really strong retargeting audiences to help you improve customer lifetime value. So that's what the session's all about. Um, in terms of what we'll cover within that, uh, it's kind of fairly straightforward. So like we'll focus on like why LTV is important. Um, but also why retargeting I think is such a great fit for improving that. Like why is it such a good tool for the job? If you decide you want to use retargeting to improve lifetime value, then like, there's a number of different things that you've really got to get sorted before you get, go ahead and do it. Because if you miss those, then you're just not going to be able to do the right job. And then we're going to go into five audiences. Uh, and I've tried to kind of do this across Facebook, uh, Google Display, LinkedIn, a number of different platforms. So hopefully it's relevant for any of you who are doing kind of retail, maybe on Facebook or B2B on LinkedIn. Hopefully there's something here for everybody. So that's what we're going to cover. Uh, in terms of getting involved, kind of already said a little bit, but um, you can chat via the interface. Genuinely love it when people say hello. So please say hello, ask questions. Um, just jump in with questions on the chat if you've got them throughout. Like the, the more kind of people get involved and say hello, the better this session is. So um, please do jump in. Love it when that happens. Um, or you can kind of follow me on Twitter or um, follow Overdrive Digital on Twitter. Uh, if that's your platform of choice, uh, we'll go from there. Daryl said, do LinkedIn last, please. What's wrong with LinkedIn, Daryl? I don't know. All right, fine. LinkedIn's about middle. All right. So, okay. Um, in terms of lifetime value, um, like obviously, like one of the biggest points here is that your returns grow exponentially. So, if you're getting uh, like a, a decent return on your new customer acquisition, that's great. Um, but if you're getting people to come back, then you're just going to be earning more money out of that original acquisition, which is a very good thing. It's usually quite a quick win, um, but for some reason, it's usually forgotten. Like 90% of the time, conversations that we have tend to be around um, tend to be around new customer acquisition and traffic acquisition, rather than how do we get people to come back? How do we get people to purchase? more often and stick around and therefore give us a higher lifetime value. Everyone kind of knows that it's cheaper to retain versus acquire new customers. So that cost per acquisition on the first transaction is usually extremely high. Whereas the second one is far, far cheaper. So if we can put strategies in place to make that happen, we save money as well. So in terms of retargeting, um, really like one of the biggest things now is that we've got amazing options. So, uh, you look at Facebook and it is, I think probably like one of the best retargeting platforms that has existed. It's so powerful. So we've got plenty of different ways to build the right audiences and get to the right people. Um, LinkedIn as well is getting better. Um, we've got Google Display. There's so many different ways we can build the right audiences. So we've got plenty of choice. It's also low cost. Um, so if we're looking at audience sizes, um, an audience of people who have purchased from you in the past 30 days, for example, is going to be significantly uh, smaller than an audience like a cold audience, right? So that means you are only ever going to be able to spend a certain amount of money on those audiences. So it is by default a low cost activity. The pl platforms such as Facebook, uh, Google Display also make it very easy to get going. There's a certain set of things that we'll talk about in a minute um, that you need to have in place. But once you've gotten used to it and you've got your head around using the platforms, it's very, very easy to get started. And on that topic, so this is one of the first things that you really need to be able to do, and that is like map out the audiences that you think you may want to target. 
and this isn't necessarily mapping out audiences as in uh, Facebook targeting, it's mapping out the types of people or segments you want to target. So um, if we're looking at people that have purchased, do we only want to focus on the top spenders? Do we want to focus on key categories? And then also, like, what are the post-purchase actions that might indicate that someone's about to come back or is potentially interested in coming back? So either we can encourage them back when they take those actions or we can encourage them to take those actions if those are the behaviours that are typically associated with returning customers. And then we might also want to look at lapsed customers. So people who just haven't purchased from you for quite a long time. So, you know, maybe in the last 12 months, maybe in the last six months, it depends on your usual cycles, but that's always a really good one to do. If you're doing that though, like the strategy might be different. It might be not necessarily immediately encouraging the next sell. It might be getting them back to engage with you via content. That's the sort of thing that you've got to decide. But if you don't map it out, you don't know. And if you don't know, you don't know what audiences to build. The second point there is that your, the, the pixel implementation really, if you're advertising on Facebook anyway, pixel implementation is absolutely key. Um, if you don't have the pixel implemented correctly, you're going to have no way of targeting the right audiences. So... Um, these are the standard events on Facebook. So view content is triggered when someone views a product page. Obviously, purchase is a purchase. There's loads of different options here that you can implement. Um, so one side to it is if you don't have them in, you don't know when that's, the, that action's happened and therefore you can't build the retargeting audience you want. Secondly, you can't measure what's happening after the purchase. So how many people who have purchased have come back and looked at another product how many people who have purchased have come back and signed up for a newsletter these events will tell you that what we can also do with events on facebook is uh is is pass through data in the parameters so <clears throat> this would be like when someone's purchased we may want to pass across information such as revenue or sale total um maybe even discount total uh, the quantity of product, the product name, the product ID, all of these types of things are really useful when we're starting to build out um, audiences on Facebook and really understand who it is we may want to target. Um, just have a question here, on what is the easiest way to check pixel implementation? Uh, do you have the pixel, so the, definitely go and get the pixel helper extension in Chrome if you haven't done that already and that will tell you what's currently there and what data is firing back into Facebook. Um, and then if you've implemented your pixel via Google Tag Manager, use preview mode to see what's firing where and when. And usually I find the comb comb combination, so combination of those two things gives you a full kind of answer on whether or not uh, the implementation's correct, and if not, where to start looking to fix it. Hopefully that answers that. Cool. And then if they, so we've got the standard events, but it's also really easy to set up custom events. So um, a custom event will be, you know, something that is not listed on the standard list, like a donate or registration or something like that. Um, I've set up an example one here for, um, I want to fire an event when someone comes back to my site from one of my email campaigns. Reason being, if they're coming back via my email campaigns, they're engaged, they're keen, right? So I fire an event and then I can build a retargeting list off the back of it. So it's very, very easy to do. Um, you just customize the code in the event slightly. Um, and if you use Google Tag Manager, again, you can kind of trigger those custom events on all sorts of different things. LinkedIn, don't forget the LinkedIn pixel as well. Even if you're not advertising on LinkedIn, <clears throat> like I'd still kind of highly recommend having the insights pixel on the website. Um, it means if you do want to build a retargeting audience in the future, the data's there. Uh, you can also start to kind of analyze demographics and that type of thing um, once the pixel's in place. So it's definitely a useful thing to have. Sadly, it's not quite as customizable as the Facebook pixel, but it's still good to have there. 
customer lists as well is another option. So, um, you know, you may not always want to build retargeting lists based on um, pixel data. Um, if you want to export leads or anything like that, then um, you'll need a customer list. And each platform will have different specs for these. So um, just to kind of, there's some links here that you can follow. Uh, but Google, that you need a minimum of a thousand email addresses for search. Uh, you'll need a hundred for YouTube uh, and a uh, hundred for display as well. LinkedIn, you'll need 300. Um, Facebook, you'll need a hundred, but that's minimum. So that's a minimum match rate. So if you have a list of a thousand emails, but only a hundred match, then for LinkedIn, that's going to be too low. So um, the bigger the list, the better, basically. Bing, yeah, basically same options on Bing. Bing ads, if you have, I don't know if you've used Bing ads, but it's basically the same sort of platform as Google ads, um, which we'll go through in a bit. But yeah, it's very similar on Bing. Um, so planning spend is also a really big one here because the audience sizes tend to be quite small. Um, there again, like I was saying earlier, there's only going to be a certain amount of money that you can spend before you start over delivering and oversaturating. So to do kind of figure out what that might be and put some estimates around it, kind of just work out what that audience size is going to be. So if it's retargeting purchases, typically how many purchases do you get a month? Um, look at the expected CPM and then you can start to work out how much you may or may not be able to spend. So that's a really good thing to kind of have a look at first. All right, so they're definitely the things you need to prep. Um, any more questions on that side first? So I'll have a swig. No, I don't think so, cool. All right, so in terms of audiences, so the first one we'll look at is dynamic cross-selling on Facebook. So um, on Facebook, we have the option to set up a catalog campaign or catalog sales campaign. What that means is it, me it allows you to serve, dynamically serve products from your feed as your ad creative. So if you choose a catalog sales campaign, that means we're basing it on your feed, a bit like a Google Shopping campaign. Before you do that, like as we've kind of gone through, like you've really got to make sure that you've got the right data in Facebook. So um, if we're setting up a catalog sales campaign, we need a certain number of things. So first off, we need to know when someone's purchased so we can target them to come back and buy something similar. We also need to know what they've purchased. So we can't cross sell a related product if we don't know what that initial product was. So um, the bit of data Facebook uses to match a product against a product in a feed is not the product name, it's the product ID, it's the content ID. So you have to make sure that the content ID that's passed with the purchase event matches the content ID in the, fill, in, in the feed. If it does, you're good. Then when you set up your ad sets on a catalog sales campaign, the options look a little bit different. So unlike the standard route where you go, yeah, I want to target people interested in running or interested in tennis, whatever it is. Um, here we basically have a number of different options to target people based on their um, journey through your website. So in this case, we want to select the cross sell products. So, we're gonna promote all products to people who have purchased from a product set below, which we can choose either all the products from my catalog or a certain category in the last 14 days. However, like if we're doing this, you may also want to think about things like delivery times. So, you know, the ideal time for someone to receive a cross sell or complimentary product ad will be in that honeymoon period when they're really happy with that product and having a great time using it, which won't be before they've received it. So if it takes two days to get there, put a delay of two days in. If you think they're gonna be really using it about a week later, you can exclude people who have purchased within the last seven days. But that needs to be thought about. Like it's not always, right, everyone who's purchased in the last 30 days is done, is 
is not always the best route. In terms of what works, like you have to play around and test it, obviously, but um, a lot of people use a discount for the next purchase. So, you know, thanks a lot, come back, there's 10% off your next purchase. I think just genuinely promoting complementary products is a really good thing. So, um, you know, if, 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 you, if you do have products that will, you know, genuinely help someone who's purchased something, that's a really good thing. And sometimes there's enough in itself. And then just sometimes it's a thank you for purchasing. We really appreciate the business. You know, we'd love to hear from you again if you had a positive experience. You have to test these things and it really depends on what you as a business feel comfortable with. Um, there is also the potential with these types of campaigns to look a little bit freaky. So we know you've purchased, thank you. Um, you know, you don't want to scare people. Just test the barriers, test the barriers. So the other kind of one we can do on Facebook, which is pretty cool, is looking at like product purchase cycles or purchase life cycles. So certain categories of product will have um, kind of, I'd say average and fairly repetitive life cycles. So makeup, beauty products, ink cartridges, people will need to replenish what they've purchased after a certain amount of time. The idea here is if we know what that time is, we can start serving ads, right? So that's a really good one to do. It's also very, very, very easy on Facebook. So first thing you've got to do, obviously, is work out what that average time between purchases is. And it is, you know, your best kind of thing here is really going to be the closest you can get is, a, is an average. Um, but you work that out. And then it's very easy to build the right audiences. So um, what we're basically doing is going, setting a long window, so 45 days past purchase and then going well we want to exclude people from the first 30 days of that so on day 31 our ad triggers saying you know if your ink cartridges are running low again come back and it runs for 15 days and then stops you can start to play around with those windows obviously that totally depends on the product and the kind of average life cycle that you're getting um, but well worth trying So Gmail sponsored promotions, again, it's kind of usually left out of the mix a little bit. Um, I don't know how many people on here have used Gmail sponsored promotions, but it's quite a, quite a cool little placement on the Google Display Network. So um, basically what it is, is a really native looking ad within someone's inbox. And you may have seen them in yours. Um, it looks just like a... Um, a thread like a standard gmail thread but it's promoted so it's really kind of organic feeling here um so if you're promoting kind of again to past past customers or even kind of uh, dead leads like this is a good option so on the google display network um we can also use matched audiences on here. So <clears throat> this is where we send in a list of email addresses from past customers or leads. Um, and we can use those on uh, Gmail, search and YouTube. Annoyingly, uh, we can no longer use, it's been for some time actually, we can no longer use matched audiences from customer lists on Google Display. But you can use them on Gmail, search and YouTube. So again, like there's a few different templates here. So uh, for Google, we will need uh, email, um, same phone, first name, last name, country, zip. But if you download the templates, you'll see what's there. Uh, now, some platforms will have direct connections. So like for example, MailChimp has a direct connection with Facebook ads, so you can just constantly feed your newsletter or database data straight into Facebook for audience creation. Um, saves a lot of manual work. Um, but whatever you're using, um, you can either download a CSV or um, you can create a connection via an API. Depends how much development resource you have. Depends kind of on the frequency that you want to update your audiences. Um, but a CSV is, is obviously like the very simple option. 
this type of thing is also really good for um, pipeline progression. So if you're looking at this from a B2B angle and you have leads in your pipe that have stagnated somewhat or are getting stuck between stages, you know, maybe kind of if you've got enough data, putting those into a customer list, serving them a few ads in Gmail, sponsor promotions could be a good thing. Um, it's also quite good or like it's a good placement to match up and marry up with email activity. So, <clears throat> you know, if you are sending out a newsletter or sending out a uh, email campaign, you know, why not consider serving some Gmail sponsor promotions at the same time, just to boost a little bit more kind of presence within that inbox. Not a bad idea. Um, or obviously like we don't have to use customer match for Gmail. Um, we can also use audiences imported from Google Analytics. So uh, in this case, we're looking at creating an audience of anyone who has um, transacted on our website within a certain amount of time. We can just import that into Google Ads. And if we've got it in Google Ads, we can also use that audience on Gmail for Gmail sponsored promotions. Okay, so similarly on LinkedIn, um, like we can create matched audiences here. It's far less sophisticated than it um, than it is on Google Display or Facebook. Um, but we can either upload a list of people and contacts, or we can upload a list of company names and start building out our audience targeting on top of that. But it's well worth noting that although this is quite a common misunderstanding, although LinkedIn is a B two B primarily as a B2B advertising platform. Therefore, usually the account lists or um, contact lists that you're uploading will be business email addresses. Most people have their LinkedIn profiles set up on a personal email address. Therefore, the match rates can be very low if you're doing that. So that's definitely one thing to consider. In terms of the template, like it is so simple. It's literally a list of email addresses in a CSV file. That is it. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that, you can upload it and put it into LinkedIn as a matched audience. In terms of what works, um, again, it's like a little bit different here because we're talking about leads rather than um, trying to get someone back for a second purchase. But I think content plays a really key part here. So. Um, just re-engaging people with new content. We can serve ads in the feed via sponsored content. It all feels very organic. Can we get someone back to the website? Can we get them kind of hooked in again? Do we want to do a second sign-up offer or bonus or returning bonus? Um, introducing new products as well is a really good way of keeping current customers engaged. So, you know, if they've signed up, they're using your service already, you know, you need to get the news out with a new development or a new feature. We can do the same thing here to supplement um, kind of the standard email campaign that you might send with a new product development <clears throat> and tutorials as well. So, um, you know, if you're working in a uh, software or SaaS, like normally um, lifetime value is affected heavily by the amount of usage someone kind of has on your product right so the more you can get someone to use the product the more people stick around so why not kind of advertise tutorials to the people that are using your product to get them engaged just another little tactic there so the final one um top customers on google display so this is basically going right i want to re-engage my top spenders only so we can again really easily build out audiences in Google Analytics, which is far easier than building audiences in Google Ads directly. You have more options, um, so they're just way more flexible in terms of creating them. Plus, you only need the GA tracking code. You don't need the Google Ads tracking code as well, so way better. So we can do things like uh, we'll set conditions in the audience for people who have spent over a certain amount. Um, or like, of course, if you've got the customer list from your CRM, then you can use that as well. Sharing that audience with Google Ads couldn't be, couldn't be any easier. Like once you've set it up, as long as you've got your Google Ads account and your Google Analytics account linked up, then you can share the audience straight in. And then you've got it for Google Display. And of course, search um, Gmail and YouTube as well. 
Um, so yeah, customer match were limited to those three, but the standard retargeting audiences that you're going to be importing from Google Analytics, we can use on all four, which is really good. All right, so key takeaways. Um, so basically, yeah, first things first, just map out your audience segments based on kind of, I guess, like business needs and like the typical stages of buying that your customers go through. You have to make sure your tracking is complete because if it's not, you actually won't be able to set up the audiences and then you're going to struggle, of course. Um, test across different platforms, um, test across different placements. Obviously, it's going to be dependent heavily on your audience, but test, test, test. And then test the different messaging and hooks for getting people back in. Is it an offer? Is it a gift? Is it, um, you know, just saying thank you? Test the messages and see what works for you. And that's it. So, um, thanks for kind of joining. If there's any questions, uh, there's the QA section there or the chat. Uh, feel free to ask. No? Okay. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks for the questions. Cool. Alrighty. So, um, well, basically, we'll follow up tomorrow with the recording. So, everyone's got a copy. If anyone's got any questions or they want to kind of follow up, uh, do feel free to drop me an email. I think we've got one coming in here. Go for it. I think we've got a question coming. What's the easiest? Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's, it's really difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult. Um, Facebook analytics is all right. So um, remember, if you've got the Facebook pixel on your website, it's going to be recording activity for every single purchase, not just purchases through the Facebook ads. So you can do that there. Um, re you really need a good CRM. It, it comes down to a good CRM system be that for e-commerce, B2B, it's, you know, you have to have that in place and be able to analyze the information. Uh, Patrick, I think, uh, do, 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 Patrick, you had a question or you're like, you're waving. Jump in the chat. Patrick, I'm just tapping out. Oh, there's a mistake. Well, I'll wave back anyway. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Great. So look, I'll send around the recording. Thanks so much for joining. And um, if there's any questions at all, drop me an email, drop me a tweet, um, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. And bye.